All right, hi all, how are you? I am back and um, believe it or not, I picked another grid pattern because I just found this to be super pretty. I really like, be honest, I really like step five as it is with the red. And that is probably where I'm going to head with this. Um, so it is a grid pattern. Uh, you're gonna start out with a pencil grid. Um, in squares. So can you see the the green lines? That's pencil. So you're going to do a pencil grid in squares and then you're going to do this sort of bracket shape. You're going to come up on one square corner to corner with this curve and then down to the next one. So we have these mermaid tail bracket type things. That's step one. Now I think this is going to be a challenge which is why I picked it. Um, Besides it being a grid, it's got this interesting bit here, which this part number two seems to be the part that's going to give me the most challenge. And I don't know why I thought, think it's going to give me challenge. It doesn't look like it should be that hard, but anyway, we're going to do a diagonal from here to here. And then skip this row. And do that same diagonal again and then when we go to, into this middle row these ones they're a V like this so some some rows have this diagonal to the corner and some rows have a V I think that's where that might cause me an in, interesting issue but you're gonna aim for right there like that okay and then the next step is to do these diagonal lines here and to make sure that this has a uh, solid because not all the lines are used see like you get at this point you're just going to start erasing things because see how this has a, the green line here and then when you come over here it's gone so you're going to want at step two to put these in and then erase and then do step three okay And then step four is to do this kind of curvy line here that's thicker. And then step five is to fill in the background. But to me, instead of getting to this point, I am actually going to stop here and I'm going to fill my background in with red or some other color. But I like, I like that look. So that's where I'm going to go. And here's the big sample that shows it here and here. So let's give this a go. I want it on regular white paper though. Do I have some regular white paper? Uh, I haven't cut any because I bought that pack of all that papers. So this one will do. It's kind of a cream color, but that will do. All right, so step one is to make myself a pencil grid. Go around like that. Oh, I haven't turned on my light. See, look at the look at that horrible shadow that happens. And then when I turn on my light, all that shadow disappears. It's lovely and I can see and I don't make shadows on my own work. Okay. So let's do here and here and here and then here and here and there. That's sort of square, right? I'm sort of squarish. Trying to straighten some of these lines out, and they're going to get erased anyway, so something like that. That's square enough. Square enough. And then I'm going to, with my pencil, try 
check and see if that looks right because if it doesn't look right I'll change the size of my grid that looks okay that looks okay all right I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to just keep going with my pencil. Alright, so I've drawn it with pencil so that it's easier for me to do the pen. And I think I may, I just may make them this shape. slightly fatter. So instead of using my number two pen, I've moved up to a number five. Just so you know, I'm making this shape just slightly fatter. definitely helps me to have that pencil on there so even though my pencil isn't right with the shape I can adjust it with my pen but it helps me to remember that my curve needs to go down and over like that see I'm not even close to my pencil line which is good because I want my pencil to just give me the idea of where I'm supposed to go Ooh, that's awesome okay so far so good and then I'm gonna get my smaller one back and I'm gonna do this next thing this is the part that I'm most worried about so on this row I want to go to the corners like this And then I'm going to skip that row and I'm going to do that again on this row. Do the corners. Like that. And then in this row, this one and this one, I want to make a V here. one. I almost made a mistake. I almost drew in there. Don't want to draw in there. Like that. Right? And then you're meant to do erase and do these up vertical lines. Erase next, all the way around. 
Oh, I can leave the outside one. Oh, that's all right. I'll just erase the whole thing. Uh, I can put the outside one back. But I could leave the outside one. Let's put the outside one back. Like so. And then I want to make, I'm going to complete this shape by making this line and this line. Like that. Cool mermaid tail shape. I love that shape. You're supposed to put one here too, but I think I want to leave this like this. I think. I don't think I want that line there. Yeah, I don't think I do. I want to leave it like a mermaid tail. See, that's the part of CPT, Creative Pattern Tangling, is that you can take a pattern and make it your own by doing something different than what the step out shows. You don't have to follow the step outs. Okay, so then we want to go diagonals here. Like that. And then this other direction, but I find it easier to draw. Going that same way. So turn me upside down. Like that. Okay. Next is this bunch. It goes this way, following that same pattern. So if it's going this way, What? My watch is telling me it's time to get moving. Guess I suppose it is. I should go take a little walk. I'll do that after I'm finished with this one. Go we'll take a little walk around the yard. Although the wind is a bit blustery. It's not as bad as some days. It's not our highest wind. I think it's only blowing... Let's see, what's it blowing? Let me look how my little... What? Why aren't you opening? Turn on, little phone. Uh... Weather station. It is blowing approximately 8 to 10 miles an hour. That's not too bad. We've had where it's been blowing 40 to 60 miles an hour. So 8 to 10 isn't that bad. That's just a barely a wind at this point. Let's see. What's our... What's our... Uh, high wind today though because that's just what's going right now uh, pressure I want I want wind wind the high 
been about 13, 14. It's averaging around eight. It's been about 13, 14. That's not too bad. That really isn't. It's been much worse. And I'm sorry, I got on a tangent instead of was drawing, but you know, it's me. I do that. I get a little ADD. And looks like it's starting to, to skip a little bit. It's starting to maybe run out of ink a little. I'll keep dealing with it until it gets really bad. And then I'll get myself a new pen of some sort. I don't know what brand. Whatever I happen to have laying around. That's good. I, I like this tighter weave better than I did up here. Maybe I'll go in here and put some an extra line in between. I really like that tighter look better. If I have room in here. Really not that much room in here to do that, but I'm doing it anyway. That works. Okay, so then the next thing we want to do is that sort of an S curve, and I'm going to do it with my pencil so that I don't goof up. And it needs to be sort of from here to here that sort of swoop there there and like that and then I'm going to turn it and do the same thing here now we're going to fill that with a thicker line and I may just do it with my brush pen let me see how my brush pen is working today I think maybe so. So I'm going to go light and then I'm going to go heavy and then I'm going to go light. Like that. This way I don't have to color in. Light and heavy. And then light again. Light, then heavy, and light again. That's what I like about these brush pens is you can get this variation of line weight depending on how hard you press on the pen. But at the same time, the brush pens tend to wear down much faster before they run out of ink the tip of the pen gets ruined. So, you know, it's a compromise. I really like that. And now I want to put, instead of filling that back in with black, I want to fill it in with, I think with red. I like the red. So I want to, I want to draw, I want to call it T-R-E-L-L-Y-S dash E L V E N. And I am going to get me a red maca.
So I'm just using these cheap uh, Artist Loft watercolor dual tip markers. Um, the other side has a, a bullet nib. I never use the bullet nib. I always use the brush tip. Just my personal preference. You guys do use whatever you want. These are not the best markers in the world. Obviously, you know, something like Copics would be a much better marker, but at the same time, I am not making professional illustrations. I'm just playing. So the cheapo package, I don't even remember how much this cost, but I'm sure I didn't spend more than like 10 bucks on it for a pack of, I think it's 24 markers. Um, Yeah, I'm sure I didn't spend more than that. I really like that red. And I'm wondering if I even want to do shading on this particular one or if I just want to leave it just seriously black and white and red. I think I might just want to leave it just like that with no shading. I'm not sure. Although I'm really tempted to put shading there, which I think maybe I will. I can always erase it. That's the thing with shading is, you know, you can go in and you can erase it if you don't like it. So let me do the red and then I'll decide if I want to do some shading in there or not. I think maybe I do. So how are you guys today? Are you planning anything good for the weekend? I, let's see, what day is today? Today is that one. I will be working tomorrow. Tomorrow will be Groundhog Day. The day we all find out the prediction of the old hog, Groundhog a marsupial is going to tell us, uh, is it a marsupial or is it a rodent? Is a, is a groundhog a marsupial or a rodent? That's a good question. Let me, let me, let me ask Google. Okay, Google. Is a groundhog a marsupial or a rodent? Oh no. No, no, no. It's a marmot. It's a member of the squirrel family. It's neither a marsupial nor a rodent. It is a squirrel. Okay, good to know. Anyway, the groundhog will be telling us whether or not we are having more winter this year or not. We have already had more rain in January of this year than we had all of last year. Like seriously, all of last year. For those of you who live in a wet climate, you probably don't understand this, but we've had Let's see, let me go back to my, my weather app, go to rain, and the last month, we have had 7.34 inches of rain so far in January, as of the date that I'm recording this. I don't think we had more than five inches all year last year. So we live in a really dry climate here in Southern California. And so longer winter would be fine with us. Now I know you guys on the East Coast that gets a bazillion tons of, of, of snow, you don't necessarily want longer winter, but, um, we need we need snow in our local mountains. We need snow in the Sierra Nevadas north of us. That's where all of our water comes from. 
So we could use a longer winter than we had in the last couple of years. We need some snowpack. So that's 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 where I'm aiming for them. Uh, let's see. I, yeah, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. Give me some shading right here. On these little bits. I imagine that there are some of you who live in places where you can get seven inches in one day. And that, uh, you know, that's not an unusual amount of rain for you. We have, we have been surviving on not very much rain. Really. It is super dry and you wonder why we have uh, those big huge brush fires we have in the in the summertime or in early fall. It's because we literally live on very little rain. And our plants they they they're dry. They are dry. Oh yeah, that was needed. And I almost feel like I want to embellish that a little bit more. dots. I'm feeling dots. So dots is coming. Oh, where's my big pen? Oh, wait. Yep. And that's what they needed. They didn't need dots. Just when I thought I was finished, it says, now I need dots. Aha. Yes. Okay. I'm happier with that. I'm happier with that. Do I want any more shading? I don't know. Do I want a little shading in here? Like that. Yeah. Except for I'm not, I'm not happy with this one right here. Too much. Too much. A little bit. Just enough for my eye to see it, but not enough for really to pick up. Yeah, no. Don't like it. See? You can always erase the shading if you don't like it. I like it better just straight white. Yeah, no, better straight white. Alright, I think I'm done. You guys have a great day. Have an awesome weekend. Do something fun with your family this weekend. Go out and do something nice for someone today. I will be at work. So, you know, keep pleasant thoughts in your head for me. And um, I will see you guys later. Yeah, I will see you later. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Oh, I forgot to tell you what next week was. Next week is going to be A&D on Monday. 
Agile, A-G-I-L, on Wednesday and Blissfolded on Friday. See ya.